Hi guys, I know it's literally years later, but I promised I would continue these tutorials, so here we go. This is part two of Flash dress up game tutorials, and here we're going to explore movie clips and frames. So, again, if you already have a basic idea of using Flash, the program, this might be a little boring, uh, but if you're new to Flash, it should be very useful. So, there is a timeline in Flash. If you don't see it in your Flash, go up to Window and uh, Timeline. Now you can see there are layers here and these work just like Photoshop and at some point actually Adobe who owns Photoshop bought out Macromedia that used to make own Flash and since then they've made the two programs more similar so actually a lot of things from Photoshop can be transferred over to Flash. Uh, so there's layers and I can add new layers and I can delete layers and they have color codes. Um, there's folders, you can put uh, layers into folders. I don't like folders myself, but um, some people prefer to work that way. Um, you can collapse them, open them. Okay, great, but what you'll notice is in uh, Flash what's different is there's also frames, so layers go up and down, whereas frames go left to right. And Normally in Flash this is used for animation to go back and forth through time so on each frame you would have a drawing that moves uh, slightly differently so that um, you can animate it you know like here you might have a guy and I right click here I click insert blank keyframe and I have a new frame and I could draw the guy here and he's now running or something and um, you can animate between them and keep adding more frames. I'm going to remove this frame. Uh, but when dress ups, you usually don't do as much animation, but you use frames often for different clothing items. Like if you have a person on one frame, you'll draw one shirt on another frame. You can draw another shirt and so on. So those are layers and frames. And now another huge concept in Flash are movie clips. And this one's pretty unique to Flash as far as I know and there are three types of movie clips. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, make a rectangle, I'm going to go to my selection tool, select it, and now I'm going to right click and select, um, now this goes off the screen, but I scroll down to where it says convert to symbol, or you can press F8, and I get this little window, convert to symbol, it's asking for name, so I'm going to name it something that I would recognize, uh, rect angular green uh, button because I'm going to make this into a button. Here I have three choices for type of movie clip or symbol. Sorry, for type of symbol, one of which is movie clip or button or graphic. So I'll go through each of them. First we'll make a button. Uh, registration, I'll start in the middle. All this other stuff I won't worry about. OK. And now you see it's gone from being all fuzzy and selected to having a blue line around it. And if we go to properties, we can now give it an instance name uh, because we're going to be programming later and we're going to be talking to the game through the programming language and telling things what to do. So what instance names are for is we give this a name. Instance names are kind of like nicknames. Awesome button. And later we'll be writing code that says, hey, awesome button, this is what what's going to happen when you're clicked on. So it's just a way for us to reference that button. So what is a button? Now, here is the symbol. I can move it around. I can double click to go inside of it. And now you see at the top my navigation it says now we used to be on scene one and when we double click inside we go inside scene one and then inside the rectangular green button. We are in the world of the green button. If we double click anywhere outside of the content here, we zoom back out to scene one. Double click on the symbol we are inside rectangular green button. So here, now that we're inside, we can edit it, do whatever we want. And there's a timeline. Now that we are inside of the world of the green button, it has its own timeline. And the button symbol has a very specialized uh, timeline with four frames. And what these do is you can tell the button to behave differently whether the user, whether the button's just there, I think that's up, over as if the uh, user's cursor is hovering over the button. Down is when the moment the user clicks and holds the button down. And hit is an interesting one. 
you can specify a hit area um, for your, to say which part of your button should be sensitive. For example, if instead of this I'll click delete, we have a really strange button and we just want it to look like a bunch of dots. Um, but it's really hard to click on the dots. We want the user to not have to use their brain much, which is always a goal in game design. Uh, I'm going to go to hit and right click and go insert blank keyframe, which means we're going to do something here, but don't fill it with any content. We want a fresh slate. Let's insert blank keyframe. And looking back, our dots are here. Actually, you can click down here. There's a really cool onion skin tool, which we're, or even though we're on the hit frame, we can kind of see outlines of what's going on in the frame before it. So here, we're going to go to the circle tool, um, select no uh, stroke, and I'm going to make a circle. That encompasses these lines. You can click here on the, each layer, you can toggle this kind of view, this outline view, so you can see what's happening um, if you want to work on multiple frames. But anyway, so what's happening is now, even though the button looks like a couple dots, the hit frame w overrides everything in terms of what part is sensitive. So anytime the user hovers over this area, uh, something will happen. Oh, here, I'll show you. Let's have something happen here. I'll insert keyframe here. Not if we if I say insert blank keyframe, it'll uh, insert a frame that has no content. But I want to have that cotton still there. So I'm going to say insert keyframe. Keyframe means we're going to have something new happen here. So I want there to be dots when the button's like this. But when I hover over it, I want there to be even more dots. So now if I press control enter, this tests my movie. And oh, there you go. There's dots. If I hover over it, there's more dots. But you'll notice I don't have to go right over the dots. I can hover anywhere because what's determining the sensitive area is that circle on the hit frame. See if I took this out, press control enter to test. I'd have to go right over the dots and that's annoying. But anyway, OK, so that is a button. And what happens is when I made this button, when I made the symbol, if you go to your library, a library is a list of all your assets, all the things you have made, all the boxes. So here is this symbol, and you can pull down more of them. So that's another cool thing about Flash is you can make one symbol, and you can have multiple instances of it, they're called, and you can do things to them. And as long as you're doing it to the outside of the symbol, the symbol itself in the library doesn't change, uh, but the instances do. But what's handy is when you publish your game, it saves on memory because the program remembers, oh, this is the one symbol and these, this is the symbol, you know, stretch times 50, but only has to remember this one drawing instead of remembering four separate drawings. So that was a button. Now I'm going to make something else. I'll make a movie clip. And so I'll make a circle this time, select it. To select it, I can either have the selection tool and drag across, or I can double click. If I click once, I'll select the fill. If I double click, I'll select the fill and the outline. And I will again press right click or press F8 and click. You can't see, but I'll click convert to symbol. And this time I'll call it purple circle movie clip. Although there's going to be so many movie clips in the game, we'll just call it purple circle. Select movie clip, registration in the center. OK. And now, similar idea, you can see something new popped up in my library. The purple circle has a slightly different uh, icon because it's a different type of symbol. Uh, use count here means it says one because right now on the stage there is one of them that I'm using. And again, same as uh, buttons. All symbols, we can keep dragging multiple instances of them to the timeline. And we can give them all different nicknames, aka instance names, like purple circle one, purple circle two, and so on. And this is so later, we can use the code to talk to them and say, OK, hey, when the user clicks this, purple circle one should move here, purple circle two should go there, purple circle three should disappear. Or, you know, in the case of dress-up games, these pants should do this, this 
this necklace should come off, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and the third type is a graphic. Uh, the graphic you don't hear about people using so often. Um, so I'll just click F8. The graphic purple pentagon. Pentagon, right? I think it's Pentagon. You'll notice if you make a graphic, you can't give it an instance name. It's because a graphic is sort of like a lighter object. It's just meant to sit and be looked at. It can't have code talking to it. And because, but because of that, I think it takes up less memory uh, and less processing. So if you don't need to talk to something, it's just going to sit there. Uh, but you want to have multiple instances of it because it's still in the library. You can still keep dragging. Um, you can use graphics, but if you if you find this confusing, just forget about graphics because I'm pretty sure like nobody uses them anyway. Uh, and buttons, actually, you can if you're really handy with code, you can tell movie clips to act a lot like buttons. So really, movie clip is the key one. Okay, now we're gonna get really funky. I'm gonna take my purple movie clip, purple circle. I'm gonna go to timeline. I'm gonna go. So right now, this is the timeline for our entire movie, scene one. And if I go inside. Whoosh, zoom into the purple circle we are in its own timeline and here I can add a new layer and I can make a new shape uh, let's make it a different color so it's more obvious but a new shape double click on that and press F8 make a movie clip and pink square and now I have put a movie clip inside a movie clip. It's so crazy, right? So now we can, if I double click on here, whoosh, we're zooming in to the pink square, which is inside the purple circle, which is inside scene one. And that's just crazy. But um, later this will become handy because what we're going to be doing is, for example, we'll have a doll and that'll be its own movie clip. And then we'll zoom into that, and then there'll be different clothing items, and you know the sweater will be its own movie clip with different frames, and so on. Um, so that's the application there. And I'm trying to think. Oh, okay. Something else that's kind of neat and important is if we have multiple instances of a movie clip. If I warp the instance, nothing changes. But if I'm in here and I warp the movie clip from the inside, you can see they all change because I'm inside the purple circle, so all instances of purple circle are affected. But if it's from the outside, um, then they're not. Okay, that's it for movie clips and frames that I can think of. Thank you.